The symphony orchestra is mankind's greatest sonic invention. This, well before the discovery of electricity and amplifiers, was the ultimate power band. Every instrument in the orchestra has its own history, its own pedigree. Trumpets go back to ancient times, flutes thousands of years before. The clarinet was invented in the 18th century. There's thousands of years of musical history in an orchestra for any instrument worth its salt. The guiding principle for an orchestra is the more, the merrier. Two violins? How about three? Tell you what, let's make it an entire desk of them. No, let's make another desk. Let's make bigger versions, yes, deeper ones, and deeper ones still, and let's call them all strings. In numbers, the strings make up more than half an orchestra, but they make up the first four sections of a classical orchestra. Next comes woodwind, brass, and percussion, which together are like four tastes in food. They blend in all sorts of ways our oral palate and joys. The strings are the proteins, nutritious brain food. They divide up, or rather down, into violins, violas, cellos, double basses, all essentially versions of the same instrument. This is the engine room of the orchestra. It's driving force, the brains of the outfit. If you want to know what the orchestra is saying, listen to the strings. Strings having a voice isn't as surprising if you consider the human voice is created by a vibrating string, our vocal cords. So, our voice sounds more like a stringed than a wind instrument, so yes, violins can indeed sob. Strings are pretty much the most essential part of an orchestra, but the next most important section is the woodwind. In technical terms, bits of wood you blow into. In a classical symphony orchestra, woodwind are usually divided into four sections, and with each instrument we go down in pitch, flutes, oboes, clarinets, and bassoons. Flutes on high sound pure and angelic. Oboes, played with a reed in the mouthpiece, have a distinctive quacking sound. No doubt I, Prokofiev, featured them as the duck in Peter and the Wolf. Clarinets are cool, and that's because they're the new kids on the block, the most modern instrument in the classical orchestra. And low down, the bassoons can provide stability, humour and, well, frankly, weirdness. Together, the wind section provides sweetness, elegance, beauty. They decorate rather than dictate, and they contrast particularly well with the strings, a dialogue you'll see many, many times. Third section is the big boys, the brass. Again, commonly divided into four, and again going down in pitch, trumpets, horns, trombones, tubas. This section are instruments made from metal. This means these instruments are loud. They're <coughs> loud. If the orchestra is an army, the brass are the artillery, pounding away from the rear, as far back as the rear can go. With their metal sturdiness, brass instruments like bugles and trumpets are associated with army and military bands. If you had to batter some with an instrument, you'd pick the brass any day. Horns, generally the most subtle of the brass section. Trumpets, brighter, higher, more penetrating. Larger too is the sound of trombones and deepest of all tubers. Together, these instruments can give the impression of binding strength. Brass can also shriek and shout. The guiding principle is use sparingly. Final section for the orchestra, percussion. Instruments who generally hit, scrape, rub, or shake. The usual percussion section of a classical symphony orchestra are essentially timpani drums. These are drums that can be tuned to a certain note. But ignore percussion at your peril, for they provide the real undergirthings of a piece of music, the rhythm. Percussion was the most underused section of the orchestra, so percussion players often have to be the most patient in the orchestra. There's literally a three hour wait between cymbal clangs in Wagner's Meistersingers. So, four very different soundscapes, they contrast and combine together to produce the fantastic noise of classical music.